Okay then. Um, I've seen it over many, many times, on over and over again, of um, people trying to set up an equatorial mount. All right. Um, there are so many different ways to do it. All right. But I'm going to do my way, which is probably the quickest, more efficient way how to do it. And the first thing I'm going to do is a step-by-step -step, uh, guide to set up an equatorial mount the easy way and less hassle about. Okay, first off, I start off assuming that you put your legs apart on the tripod, all right, and you're on, on, on level sort of ground as much as you can. All right, first off, you want one of these, all right, is a compass. All right, now, um, with this particular model, the Lenny Q5 uh, tripod, all right, you see the little mark N there. All right, what I always tend to do is I put this compass, all right. And I try and level it as much as I can. So wherever north is pointing, I just basically move the telescope uh, le uh, tripod legs in accordance to where that uh, compass is mo moving about. So I keep doing it to move it. Now it's a bit difficult, but I'll try my best. Okay, so I've got lack of space here. So I move my tripod legs over okay like so so now what you got here is north pointing as you are with the tripod leg just like that okay that's that gives me a rough sort of uh, alignment with uh, to obviously the magnetic north it's not true north but it's, it gets you almost near to this possible all right, so I know there's there's north. With the tripod uh, legs now aligned to north, all right, I'm going to put the the mount. All right, now this is going to be a bit difficult because I'm going to do it one-handed, but I'm pretty strong anyway, so I can do it anyway with single-handedly. All right, this is the mount head. Okay, now one tip I've noticed, all right. Um, a lot of people will try and fit the head on there, but I found out if you put a little bit of grease between the recess in there and a little bit around the the, the tri obviously the, the mount uh, race there, all right, I found out it's easy to move the mount easily, all right, and you can see why, why, because here you've got two nuts here, all right, which you turn, and basically it swivels this whole mount head, all right, so it makes it easy. So that's one little tip you can do. Then you fit it over, like so, right, making sure that this locks in place. Then grab your hand there, bolt the screw all the way in. Now it should go all the way in. Can be a bit difficult sometimes. And see, yeah, going in there, like so. Right, one, thing to, one tip is don't over tighten it. All right, the reason why you don't over tighten it is that you, you're not going to move the head very well when you adjust the screws for pole alignment. Okay, so just nip it up tight but not too tight so you can't. Then, obviously, with the accessory tray being slack because they're still moving on the legs, you tighten up the accessory tray, and that, what that does, it will help. Um, space the legs apart properly and makes it much more sturdy. Keep screwing it until it's all pretty tight. All right, as you can see the telescope is getting stable now, so that pretty tight now. Okay. As I see, make sure that's not too too tight. All right, just tight enough so you can turn turn the heads for pole alignment. Right, as I mentioned before, because there's no spirit uh, spirit level, it's actually on the it's actually on the head itself. And what you're trying to do is, if you can see that, is the bubble there. What you're trying to do is try and get the bubble in this little circle reticule. And what you do is to get that in circle circle is then you adjust these legs, little screws there, either side. Alright, and you just basically 
loosen that off lift this, the tripod leg slightly up all right just making sure that you don't nudge it from from where you have position up to north all right and then once you're done it should you know, your, your level should, spirit level should be in the middle that will be in level ground okay then next step is you put your counterweight bar put that counterweight bar screw that in like so that is the counterweight bar in there all right do not put the counterweight yet as yet all right this is where it becomes apparent now your scope is more or less in the position pointing north and on level ground okay assuming that it's dark sky and um, the main, main function you've got to do is make sure that your equatorial mount is polar lines now polar alignment is very important the more accurate you can get this mount polar aligned the better your tracking and the go to function will go for this mount as well so polar aligned then it starts off with this first things first before you uh, do anything make sure that uh, you take off the cap and the cap from this side as well for the polar scope right so then as you can see here alright before you even go down to the polar scope to have a look at the uh, polaris alright first thing you want to do is loosen these clutch this clutch here and move it as you can see here is you can see this this little gap here you want to see that circle so it's clearly see so you can see the polar scope you then tighten that, all right, and that gives you the open aperture of your uh, polar scope. Okay, so you can see through it. That's number one mistake a lot of beginners go go wrong with, is not actually moving the actual declination head so that you can see the polar scope, or you won't see the decal. Then, providing this is locked, make sure that the right ascension is unlocked. Okay, and you'll see why. What you're going to do now is basically what's going to happen is when you um, try and find Polaris, obviously use a star chart or a planisphere to locate uh, Polaris. Once you've got an indication on part of the sky, the only bits you only touch, right, do not touch anything else on this mount, the only thing you do touch is, is your turn screws here. All right, and you altitude bolts. All right, this works like an Altozimov uh, principle. All right, these are the only bolts that you touch. These two bolts here is to move sideways from left to right, so it moves the the, the the mount left and right. And this, these bolts go up and down. All right, this is to go up, and this is to go down. Now, how this works is be careful. Um, when uh, you go up and down is you've got to make sure whatever you think you go first always adjust the first one first and then slacken the other one and do it simultaneously so as you tighten that one up slacken that one and keep going vice versa all right that's more importantly uh, another tip is before you uh, do any pole alignment make sure you give these um, before you go out just give it a bit of grease or that helps to lubricate the threads so it makes it a little bit easy and then what you do is is if you go over to once you've found Polaris in the sky you then get to the uh, reticle eye uh, to the polar sky that's the reticle here to show you where Polaris alright uh, that's your little reticle now you see one big circle and a cross now what usually happens is what you're trying to do is with that Polaris see the little circle where Polaris is you need to try and line Polaris into that little circle once you go in that little circle that will indicate that you're in um, your, your, your polar aligned all right as best as you can and all you do is also with those adjustment screws as I mentioned before 
that's the way to adjust it. Once you're in alignment, it's fine, and you're in your polar aligned. One thing I do need to highlight is, as I mentioned before, on the uh, on the decal, usually you find that Polaris has moved uh, a little bit out of sync along the line. Right? If you can't get Polar line, all you've got to do is just turn the head. You know, turn the the right tension. That little, remember that little bolt I said let loose. Just turn the little head around. Alright, and once you've got it in into Polaris, central in that little circle there, where it says highlight Polaris, you can turn it in there and then that's where you're done. Alright? That will indicate once you're in that once it's in the circle, it doesn't really matter. And once it's all in there and you adjust it, fine, that's it, that's you polar aligned. That's how easy it is. Now your mount's polar aligned, alright, you can then attach all the other bits, alright. As I mentioned before about uh, aligning up the lines, you put your markers back where they are okay and you lock that in place right so it's thin line there and thin line there so see the mark there okay that's that's now in the home position and your mount is polar aligned okay and then you can start adding the cables before you do it anything all right is um, before you mount the telescope is you need to mount the the counterweight now the reason why I said that is it's very important that you put the counterweight on first now if you mount the telescope tube on there what will happen is as soon as you release those clutches all right the telescope tube is going to swing all right so it's very important that you fit the uh, counterweights on first counterweights on now and now it's safe to uh, the mount uh, the telescope on there. Now, bear in mind is make sure the tip one. Make sure when you put your telescope is one thing I found easy, all right, because it's a dovetail. Um, I found it's easy that if you slack, slack in the decognition uh, lock, and then you turn it that way, okay, round that. Reason why is as soon as you. Uh, as soon as you put uh, your dovetail, your dovetail should sit nice and flush, and then you can get access to the uh, the lock really easy. So first thing, lock the the decognition, all right, and that'll be stable. So then when you come to put this, should be easy to mount on there, and then you just tighten it up. Now you've now we've got to the point now if you've. You've got the tripod on level ground and you've got your mount uh, pointing off to, and then obviously you've got your pole alignment uh, all, all, all adjusted. Uh, basically now what we're going to do is go to balancing the scope. Um, this can be tricky, alright, but it's going to be, I'll make it as simple as possible, right, to fix this part. First thing we're going to do is when you balance your scope, just make sure that you get all your accessories and all, all the attachments on place what you're going to use, alright? Uh, bear with me on this, I've had to attach my heavy eyepiece and all that and just to try and sort out the balance of this, because usually on my, uh, on my Lunt uh, engineering, Lunt uh, refractor, I usually have my uh, guide scope fitted on there, my fine scope, and my cameras and all that and this will have counterbalance with the, the mount. Because this mount, the, the counterweight is a bit too heavy, I've had to put an attachment to try and counteract. So basically balancing is this. First thing you do, what you do is, is um, I was off, hold the telescope first. If I hold the counterweight first, hold the telescope either way, okay, the first thing you want to do is undo the RA axis. Okay? Bear with that. That was usually fall off anyway. Right. What you're trying to do is, is you see here, the counterweight is too low. So basically that RA axis is too heavy. So what you want to do is you want to try and balance that so that it will move that slowly and not have any backlash like that. So basically unscrew that and put it all the way up to the top 
This is what you're trying to achieve. Okay, see that there? See now, this is balanced on this axis. It's easy. Okay, then what you do, you lock the RA clutch again, and then you loosen the declination clutch. Okay, oh, like that. And holding the telescope, carefully, you see that there, how it drops? It, that's too heavy there. So then what you do is, you can do two ways on this. You can either loosen these clamps here and move the, the scope rings uh, and the tube itself up and down, or you can run slack in the, uh, the dovetail or the bolts on this side, which is here. All right, I prefer to use it to do it on the, the dovetail. I prefer it easier, but that depends on the tire size of the telescope. Now, if you've got a big telescope, then it's probably best to do it on the, uh, the scope ring because it's easier. But I always find that it's easy to do it on the dovetail, but everyone's got a different um, idea. Okay, so then what I'll do is I lock declination like that, like so, and then slacken the, uh, the, the lock screws and then re tighten and then same again, pull the telescope so it doesn't topple over and then loosen the declination lock. And now as you can see Yeah, that's balance. So now all these are all these axes now are all balanced. And that's what you're looking for. Reason why you need to have it balanced is um, to ensure that your tracking and your go-to function moves as accurate as possible. Now if you have it too much uh, imbalance and all that, it will affect your tracking uh, so you know, and your go-to capabilities. So it's really important to get your, your telescope balanced. All right? It's very essential and, and even more so with your imaging as well. And as you see, I've got to a point now that the telescope's more or less set up. I'm not going to go into too much depth on the go-to sort of setup. That will come to a later date. But what happens now, this is basically the, the, the setup complete. The only thing you've got to do is I will look back onto the um, onto the uh, polar scope itself and then I'll recheck again to see if Polaris is in that little reticule in the on the um, on the polar scope and then also make just also make sure don't make sure you don't fall into this mistake. Make sure it's on an angle like that and then you take the cap off so it's, you've got the clear aperture and then recheck again. Alright, and if it's in position still, alright, you've got good polar alignment and and after that you're on your way. Um, one more tip is the polar polar scope is a bit is a bit iffy sometimes, alright, and especially when you're looking at the record on a dark sky. You can hardly see the reticle. A tip is, if you've got a red torch, and while you're doing the adjustments on these adjustments here, if you're doing the adjustments and you're trying to align polaris, it's a best a good idea to attach a little torch or something over to shine over the, the reticle, not directly over, but partly, so you can see the red um, background, and what it will allow you to see, see the reticle a bit clearer. All right, that's a little technique. But um, that's what I found that it makes it a little bit easier. But uh, apart from that, once the setup is done, you're ready to go. Um, and again, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask me and um, I can help you as much as I can. All right? But this just covers the basic setup of an equatorial uh, mouse. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.